Hey, welcome back. Today, we'll be setting up our dev environment and making our first call to the metronome API. You're going to need an API token for this, so if you don't have one yet, check the description for how to get it. Let's jump in. Before we start coding, let's look at the metronome SDKs. And these are not just API wrappers, they're thoughtfully designed tools that handle the complexity for you. Here's what I mean. Without an SDK, you would write something like this in Python just to list the customers in your metronome integration. Whereas with the SDK, we can do this in three lines. Much better. Metronome gives you SDKs in Python, Go, Ruby, and Node.js, so you have a lot of flexibility there. They all support strong typing, so you get metronome objects with full autocomplete, not raw JSON to parse. They have built-in pagination, so you can fetch thousands of records, and the SDK handles the page tokens for you. And they'll also automatically retrieve filled requests for you. And these are just some of the many features of the metronome SDKs. So you focus on billing logic, not HTTP plumbing. Now let's get your environment ready so we can see all these features in action. All right, we're now in VS Code, which is the code editor I'll be using throughout this series. For this episode, I'm starting from a small starter repo I've prepared. The GitHub link is in the description. Here's what you'll find inside. The .env.example is a template where you'll paste your metronome API token. The git ignore keeps secrets like our .env file out of version control. Requirements.txt has our Python dependencies and testconnection.py is the Python script will run to confirm everything is wired up. Once you have this repo, the setup is simple. Create a virtual environment, install the requirements, copy.env.example to .env, and paste in your API token. You can then run the Python script to make your first call to the metronome API. These instructions are all in the readme file in the GitHub repo. Now let's switch over to the metronome app to get our API token. To do that, let's navigate to the connections page and then the API tokens and webhooks tab. And then we can add a new token here. Let's call it metronome billing demo. And that's it. Metronome will show you this API token exactly once. So it's important to copy it immediately. In our case, we'll paste it in the .m file we were just looking at. Cool, now let's switch back to VS Code. All right, now let's switch to some coding. First things first, don't forget to create your .m file and paste the API token you just created in the metronome app. Great, now let's switch to our test script. First, we need to bring in some modules to make sure we can load environment variables. And then most importantly, of course, we need to make sure to bring in the metronome SDK. Next, we load environment variables from our .m file. Then we grab our bearer token. And if the token is not set, we print a helpful error message and exit cleanly. That way users get clear instructions on what to do next. Great, now that we have our API token, let's create a metronome client, which is the object we'll use to make our API calls. Let's add a comment for good hygiene. Okay, now we're ready to actually call the metronome API. And we'll wrap that in the try accept block to make sure we handle exceptions. And for our actual API calls, we'll list the customers in our metronome integration. If this call succeeds, then we'll know that our authentication is working properly. So we'll call the client that we defined earlier. And remember how we talked about strong typing earlier? This is what enables the IDE to show me all these autocomplete options. So when I type customers, I get all the methods that are available. And I'll go with the list option. And that's it, that's all we need to retrieve all the customers in our metronome integration. And once we've done that, we'll print the name of the first customer in our list. And if we don't have any customers in our metronome integration, this will still work, it'll just return zero. Okay, now let's talk about error handling. And we're gonna do that in the accept clause over here. So if authentication fails, we catch that error and give a helpful message. This is one of those SDK features we were talking about earlier specific error types for different scenarios. And then we'll add a generic handler for anything else that goes wrong outside of authentication errors. And that's our test script. Let's run it now and see what happens. To run our script, I'm just gonna start a new terminal and then call the script. And there we go. We see that we were able to successfully connect to Metronome and that we have at least one customer by the name of John Snow. All right, now we're back in the Metronome app. We can go to the customers page and confirm that Jon Snow is indeed a customer of ours. 
So again, this confirms that we were able to authenticate with Metronome and run a successful API call. Great, now you're authenticated with Metronome and ready to build. Next, we'll track usage events. And this is the first step in usage-based billing. Links are in the description. See you next time.